Tadia Hao. Hello, everyone. So here we have Dr. Nico Higgins. He is a professor of music at Sarah Lawrence College. He teaches world uh, music, and we're very honored to have him today to share with us something, a kind of music that is from the region we're studying this summer, Southeast Asia. And let's welcome Dr. Higgins. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about a, a, a genre of music in Bali, in Indonesia, um, and it's called the Kecak. And so I have a little slideshow here I'd like to share with you, and we can all um, learn a little bit more about the Kecak. And also, um, let's see, and also, uh, <laughs> here we go. And also do some uh, music making ourselves. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to, to go over some uh, essential information about Indi the country of Indonesia. The country of Indonesia is in Southeast Asia, as many of you know, um, and it's got the fourth largest population in the world behind China, India, and the US. Um, Indonesia is interesting because it has the, the largest population of Muslims. Muslims are, are people who follow the, the Islam religion. And so it's the country with the largest number of, of Muslims. However, the, the island that we're gonna be looking at, the island of Bali, where the Kechak is made and performed, is actually not a Muslim island. It, most of the people on Bali are actually Hindus, as you know from your unit on South Asia and India. Um, Hinduism is a religion that started in India. Um, so some other facts of, of Indonesia that are interesting is that the country is made up of 17,000 islands, um, which is, I mean, think about a country made of 17,000 islands. And this is actually dependent on the tides. Everybody knows what a low tide and a high tide is. Um, if there's a, a low tide, there are more hot islands in the country than there are at high tide. So um, because of that, it's a very unique place because there are so many different islands that are separated by water and therefore there are so many different languages. Um, and there are eight main islands that support the majority of the population, and Bali is one of those islands. Um, the, uh, the national motto for Indonesia is unity in diversity. And the reason why is because with all those separate islands and all those many different languages, to, to organize all those people into one country is really an extraordinary kind of thing. Um, so they, this gives you a sense for how many different kinds of people are in this one country that we think of as one country, but really consists of many, many, many different kinds of people. Um, so then Bali, like I said, is a smaller island with distinctive traditions that has remained Hindu. It, 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 the Islam, the religion of Islam never really got to Bali. So let me show you here. This is a map of Indonesia and um, the island of Bali, so I'm going to trace for you the, the border of Indonesia. And as you can see, my, my, my cursor is, is going around the entire country of Indonesia. And I'll show you the main islands. This is the main island of Sumatra. This is the main island of Java. This is where the capital is, Jakarta. And this right here is the island of Bali. And this is where we're going to be thinking and, and learning a little bit about the music known as Kecak. Um, so, first of all, what I, what's important to know about um, the Kechak is that as a, a form of culture and art in Bali, it's important to know three very important things about how to think about and understand music and art in, in Bali. First of all, Balinese music is understood as an ensemble tradition. So it isn't a solo tradition. Um, much like, you know, you think of solo singers, if you think of your favorite singer, your favorite band, you think of a person who is a singer or maybe a musician, a, a, a famous violinist or cellist or another kind of instrument. Um, but in Bali, music is understood as a collective enterprise. People that make music do it together. Mm -hmm. And so there is a, a, a value on group identity over individual expression. The, the point of making music then is not to express your own ideas or your own feelings or your own emotions, but to get together with a group and together establish a kind of group identity and a group feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is something that we're going to try to do together as we, as we work on the, the catch-up. But it's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, 
the, another important theme in Balinese music is that music, dance, theater, and ritual are all really that you can't really have music without dance. You can't really have dance without music. You can't have theater without music or dance. And also the idea that um, these kinds of traditions are somehow separate from uh, religious and re religion and culture, uh, that doesn't really exist. Everything there is integrated. In the US, we have this notion of, you know, the separation between church and state, which is something that's very understood in our culture. And in Bali, there is no such separation, that when you perform ensemble music, you are also doing music, you're also doing dance, you're also doing theater, and you're also invoking a kind of Balinese uh, cultural and religious ritual. Um, another important thing, the last kind of main theme that we're gonna uh, rem remind ourselves of as we're going through this work, is that contemporary arts in Bali are linked to identity and a sense of history. So, so all these kinds of rituals, all these traditions, it's not so much about being in the here and now, it's about linking that moment to prior Balinese history and identity. Mm -hmm. So that in any kind of form, you can, you can actually understand different stages of Balinese history, going back 100 years, going back 500 years, going back 1,000 years. And that makes all these kinds of art forms incredibly interesting and very exciting to, to learn and to teach. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the three kind of main themes that are important to understanding art in Balinese culture. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're gonna talk about the ketchak today. Ketchak is a, is a funny word. It, and so let's practice saying it, ketchak. Ketchak. So ketchak um, is, is uh, an onomatopoetic word. Onomatopoeia is a funny word to say. And let's say onomatopoeia, everybody. Um, onomatopoeia. Good, yeah, onomatopoeia. <laughs> Giselle, you're great. Um, so onomatopoeia is a funny word. What it does is it, is it means that the things that are the sound is the meaning. So the, the sound itself is the kind of word. So another onomatopoetic word is like bang or crash. Um, and I'm sure uh, Chinese has some onomatopoetic words that um, is for a kind of action or a sound or something that is this sort of sound itself. Um, but these are so interesting because they're very culturally rooted that the same kind of action or sound is gonna be translated in a different language. Um, ketchak is something that is that comes from the, the practice of, of saying the word chak. And so the syllable chak is really the only um, syllable that most people that perform the ketchak have to learn, okay? Um, and so uh, a ketchak is a dance drama that's performed for tourists in, in oh, there's a terrible typo there, in <laughs> Bali. <laughs> Typically, uh, this involves a male chorus and a few masked and costume dancers playing the roles of characters from the Ramayana, mm -hmm. especially the characters Hanuman, Ravana, Rama, and Sita, mm -hmm. the main characters. Mm -hmm. um, what happens with the Ketchak is that there is um, a male chorus. Chorus means a, a large group of musicians. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them is singing something like this, pong, 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 pong. And this musician is keeping a steady beat. And the steady beat that they're keeping is, is through their sound, pong, 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 pong. And then a few other musicians are saying the word sir. Mm. So can, you, can everybody say pong, pong, and do that with me? Pong, 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 pong. pong. Right, so that's the, the kind of the timekeeper. Um, and then the sir is, is something that a bunch of people sing and kind of, aspirate, they kind of, it's like you roll your tongue, but then you, you let it last for a long time. And, and what that is, is it marks the most important beat in the ketchak. It's sort of the beginning and the end at the same time. It's the sort of the, the most important beat that marks the pattern that everyone's gonna be singing. Um, so in addition to those two roles of the pong, 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 and the everyone else is, is doing their part saying the chak. Mm. And these different patterns um, are learned and then overlapped. 
Um, and you're going to hear how these patterns are sung in terms of this syllable and these rhythms of using the word chak. And, um, and then when, all, when everyone learns their pattern for a chuck, then the two patterns kind of interlock together. And this interlocking texture is called kotakan. And kotakan is the idea that I'm singing a pattern of chuck, 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 chuck. And then someone next to me is doing a pattern that's chuck, 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 chuck. And when we put them together, you get Check it, 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 and it gets this interlocking texture that is really exciting and really sort of amazing. The whole idea is that these are supposedly the syllables that monkeys sing, and so Hitchcock is animating the idea of the monkey army that Hanuman summons to help Rama defeat Ravana to rescue Sita from Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. um, and you may know those um, parts of the story from the Ramayana. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah, you have a question? Uh, so for the, for the say, uh, the person who says pong, 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 yep. does the person change the role uh, in the, during the course? Like then maybe another time we we'll say sir like that. No, the person that sings pong pong is that's their only job for the whole time. I see. They may at a certain point do it a little faster, mm. but they'll never stop doing it. And okay. they are an essential person because they're keeping the time for everyone. Okay. They, so they keep everyone together. Yeah, what? it's just one person. Just one person. Yeah, it's just one person. For um, well, the, the other, the second. The sir, um, that can be a small group. Mm. Um, it can be two or three people. It depends on the size of the troop. I see. Um, and the chak chak, um, it can be a dozen musicians. It can be 150. Um, you showed me a video of a colossal ketchak that contains <laughs> thousands of people that are doing it. So it really depends on the on the size of the group. So um, chak chak, that's the, the leader, and then also the. So how many leaders are there? So usually there's one leader and the leader, yeah, I didn't, I didn't mention that so much. Um, so the, the one leader, so we'll, we'll give a call like check, check. And then he'll, he'll say that before the, the sir. And then everyone knows that in that sir, that's when they're going to come in with their pattern. And this is most easily heard than it is described. So actually right now it might be a good time for us to do some listening. So would you, Gisela, play, should I stop sharing with you? Sure. Okay. And that track 36? Yeah. Ketchak. And this one. And when I, when I wave to you, you can, you can pause it so I can do a little talking. Sure. Okay. Uh, where do you want me to start? Um, why don't you start at the, about 20 seconds before. Okay. Like this? That's perfect. Right there, right there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So the audio is, is, is not quite as audible as we'd like it to be, but you can still hear the leader going chak and then having all the, 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 the people in the chorus um, continue with their pattern. Um, Gisela, is it possible for you to play the audio track um, from the Google Drive that I shared with you? Yes. I think we maybe forgot to cue that up, but maybe we can do that now. Yeah. What this is going to start with is it's going to start with um, a pattern without the interlocking. Yeah, you hear the pong. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, so what we heard there is you could hear the pong, 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 right? The person keeping the time. You heard the sir of everyone doing that that one uh, most important beat, and then you heard that um, that one um, uh, pattern. And I'd like to actually show you a representation of that pattern. Um, so I'm going to share now my screen with you. And let's see. Oops, here. And this is a, a graphic representation of what we just heard. Um, <clears throat> and this is complicated and a little hard to see. So I'm not going to, we're not going to go through the whole thing. I just want to show you some of the parts of this that are important. So at the very top, you can see this, right? You see where my cursor is? And that's the pong, 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 pong. Everybody see that? And then down here, you have the um, sir, and that's, this is the sir, that's the main beat right there. Later on in the, in the track, we'll hear the melody here, but this is, this is, this is sir right there, and that's, that's the representation for that. Okay, now, the, what we're listening to is a performance of the chaknem, which is this pattern right here. See that? It says chaknem. And what we just heard was this. So I have another slide that just shows that representation. And you can see it here. Okay, so what this, what we're looking at is, is like these three lines and these dots, right? So what does that mean? <laughs> so what this is, is a way of notating the sound that we're listening to. And um, you'll see this is chaknem right there, right? So the first pattern that we heard was called polos. And the polos was performed this way. And, and so each, each vertical line here shows the main pulse, okay? And this is the main pulse with the, the pong. So the pong is gonna go here, pong, 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 and then back, pong, 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 and goes on, right? Now, each beat of pong, 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 pong is taken and divided into four equal beats. So instead of pong, 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 you have that, but then each pong is divided into four, like one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Does everybody hear that? And what this is, the polo beat is is showing that you're gonna say something on you're gonna say the word chuck on the first beat, on the fourth, on the third, on the second, on the first, and the third. Okay, so it's gonna sound like this. Chuck, 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 chuck. And the snapping is the pong. So if you imagine my hand saying pong, 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 pong like that, then it would be sound like this. Chuck, 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 chuck. And then the leader said, chi. And then when the leader said chi, all the musicians stopped. You just heard that in the excerpt. Um, and then uh, while Gisela was looking for the off switch, it was great because then the sangsa came in. And everybody see that where it says polos there, but at the bottom it says sangsa. So sangsa is a different part. And the sangsa, as you can see, doesn't align with the polos. It doesn't match up with the polos at all. Look at that. If you're gonna be in the sangsa group, then when you're saying the word chak, you never say it when someone in the polos group says chak. And this shows you how this is these, an example of the kotakan, the interlocking texture. So that um, the polos is gonna say chak, 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 chak. But the sangsa is gonna say, 
chak 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 and when you put them together you get that interlocking texture okay so what i'd like to do now is um have gisela play the whole track again and what happens in the track is that you hear the polos first and the polos part is all by itself and then you hear the sangsa part and the sangsa part is all by itself and then you hear this middle part called the sanglot part and that's all by itself and then they all come together and everyone does it at the same time and that's when you get the interlocking texture the whole thing takes about three minutes or so do we have time to play that now Gisela, or would you like to do something else my question is this audio sound is not so uh, the volume is not high it, it actually it, it was better in the track you played than in the video okay so i think i think if we do that i think they'll be able to hear the difference yeah okay so would you mind putting it to the very beginning yes I think okay and and you'll also hear my favorite star of the ketchup which is this uh rooster <laughs> <laughs> And you just let me know when to stop anytime, okay? Okay, I'll wave my hands. Mm. <laughs> Okay, great. So I hope you're all able to hear that. Um, I like this recording because what it does is it gives you each part by itself first. So you can hear what each group is doing. And then in that last 20 seconds that we heard, it brings them all together and we can hear a really striking example of that kotakan or the interlocking um, texture that we're talking about. Um, so right now I'd like to sort of uh, remind you of that first um, theme that we talked about in our work. In, with, with Balinese music, and it, which is that it's never really about the individual. Remember that it's about this group and the group coming together um, musically is a way to kind of make um, audible or, or sort of aural this idea of sort of group identity. So that um, the, 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 the part by yourself doesn't really mean anything. It, what matters is when you come together with everybody in the other groups and everybody's doing it all at once. Um, and so, and so for that reason, very rarely in a performance will you have a group perform their, their part all by themselves. Um, and that's why this track is a good teaching tool because it does it. But most often in the examples, you, you don't see that. And, and maybe now, Gisela, if you could play the, the recording of I'll Stop Sharing and you could play the, the video recording um, of the, the, the tourist setting that we, that we had and they can see a little bit of what it's like 
the, to actually be in Bali and be a tourist and, and to be able to, to view this. This is a recording from the 60s, but it's, it's excellent. You'll see later on in a, in a few seconds, you'll see um, some of the characters enter and you'll see Ravana steal Sita away and take her away. Okay, so did you see Ravana there at the end, everybody? Take, take Sita away, steal her away. So this is the abduction of Sita. And it's, it's, the, it's the chapter from the Ramayana that is most often um, portrayed in this Ramayana version of the Ketchak. Um, and that's one sort of fascinating part of the Ketchak is that uh, it features the story of the Ramayana. So um, would you sh uh, let, allow me to share it again? Let's see, here we go, I can do it, great. Um, okay, so um, the history of the Kachak, remember how I said that uh, the, the, the Kachak is this, um, you know, way from which we can understand Balinese identity and Balinese culture, and uh, those three themes that are so important, one is the ensemble tradition, um, and uh, another one was that uh, it's a way of retelling history. Um, and the Ketchak is an important way to understand Balinese history because um, it's not uh, that old of a tradition. It actually only goes back about 100 years. It was, it was really first conceived of in the 1930s, and it was a collaboration uh, by a, a kind of a, a Dutch artist who lived on, um, who lived, and a German artist who lived in Bali um, with a kind of young choreographer. And they kind of got together and they collaborated to make this Ketchak, um, based on a lot of different um, uh, dance dramas that already existed. So the, the ritual trance dance that the Ketchak emerged from is, this, is a, a, a dance called the Sang Yang Daedari, which is a, 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 a dance that featured prepubescent girls. Um, and there was a, a moment where there was a kind of trance that happened to it, um, that was a part of the, um, a part of the dance. And this was something that inspired Walter Spies to, to encourage others to turn this into its own form. And this is where the Ketchak emerges from. Um, however, it really isn't until the 60s or 70s that it becomes a, a major force for tourism. And it's interesting because uh, today there are, there are around 20 troops in Bali and they perform about three performances um, a week. So, the Ketchak is a major source of revenue, of tourism revenue, revenue for, um, for, for Bali and for the residents of Bali. And so it's an important way of, of understanding how um, Bali is represented to the outside world. Um, mm -hmm. An important thing though, is that uh, the cultural meaning of Ketchak is also important. So if it's for tourists then, what does it mean for the Balinese? Mm -hmm. um, is this something that's just for outsiders? Um, it's not a coincidence that the Ketchak was uh, composed and, and learned at a time when there was more awareness of Bali in this sort of larger tourism world. So um, what happened is that the Ketchak, you can understand the Ketchak as a way um, for Balinese to provide tourists with something that is Balinese, but not sacred for them. 
-hmm. And that thereby that keeps them outside of their own sacred traditions, but gives them something to experience in terms of what is Balinese culture. Could you um, explain that point a little more? Sure. Um, so that is essentially, right. So, so because music, dance, ritual, and drama are so linked in Bali, mm. tourists were looking to explore how those, um, all, all those different practices were actually made meaningful. So they were going all over the island. Um, and, and in doing so, they're going into places that are, that are more sacred for the Balinese. Mm. And a temple, a Balinese Hindu temple, mm. is one that has different kinds of areas. And the outer area is allowed for everyone, but the closer you get to the inner area of the temple, the more sacred it is and the fewer people that are allowed there. Mm. So this is a kind of spatial way of understanding how they keep some of their most spiritual traditions a little more private. Um, and so the Ketchak can be understood as one of those traditions that exists on the outside of their culture. And it does so for the, for the point of, of providing tourists with something interesting to look at and something that is very relatable and understandable to Balinese culture, mm. but also not one of their most sacred traditions that means the most to Balinese themselves. Mm. Um, and, and by doing so, then they keep their sacred traditions more intact and more for themselves because they're because the tourists are not allowed to, to be there. Does that make sense? Yes, that sounds like in Chinese we have a saying called the Yijian Shuang Diao, equivalent to the English, like one stone kills two birds. So uh huh. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. And and as a result, the you know the other the other bird is that they're generating a lot of revenue, and so. Um, it's a it's a big money maker for for uh, the Balinese arts and it's important. Um, but the you know the Balinese don't necessarily have much aesthetic investment in the Ketchak. It is something they do for tourists. Um, even though it's extraordinary, it is not something that you know is something that they do for themselves as much. Uh, I have a couple questions, but we, uh -huh. you could touch upon this later. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the fact that, you know, earlier, even though it's the outsiders who came in and engineered this, yep. but the fact that they chose here to do this uh, means there's something, you know, there's something like essential, like there, there, it has to be, there's something unique from the local culture that allow people to perform this kind of music to be in that spirit. Um, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So yeah. I, and then you mentioned it's based on kind of a local, I forgot the word for it, but if later on, if you could say a little more about that, then sure, it would sure. bring deeper to what's the core at the core of this, yeah. Balance. Right, so, so yeah, so, so on the one hand, you know, we're, we're saying that this is a, a, a tourist uh, attraction, which it is. But on the other hand, it's very Balinese, and it can only be Balinese, <laughs> in the sense that um, you have the ensemble, you have this um, idea that everyone is contributing a small part that everyone is uh, participating in. So there isn't a kind of individual; it's a it's a group um, endeavor. Um, it it uh, highlights that idea of the kotakan, that interlocking texture that is so sort of central to that group identity. Mm -hmm. um, it shows the history of the ways that different um, uh, dance rituals have uh, become woven into their everyday uh, public life. Mm -hmm. um, that this, the fact that the Ketchak comes from the Sangyang Datori, which is this um, ritual with, with prepubescent girls, um, mm -hmm. that is something that you know could only happen in Bali as well. Um, and and also the idea of, and this is an important part here because. Um, it's an important part of the cultural meaning is that they're, they're using the Ramayana as a way to tell the story. And, and interestingly enough, for the first few decades of the Ketchak, the Ramayana wasn't an important part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but when um, the Balinese uh, suffered through some really uh, horrible political upheaval in the 1960s, and that sort of settled down, they were trying to resuscitate their tourism industry and they decided to, to, to sort of bring the Ramayana and the Ketchak back together again. Um, and so the Ramayana became the kind of story for the Ketchak. 
Mm -hmm. um, and uh, became more associated with the monkeys in the Ramayana story than with the uh, the male trance and the sort of chak in the sanyang gedari, the, the trance ritual from before. So really the Ramayana comes in the Ketchak from the 1960s and 1970s onward. It um, was the intention to make the Ketchak more connected to the general Southeastern Asia? Yes. Okay. Yes, because they would have known that, that visitors to Bali would have known that, that Bali is a, has remained Hindu despite the, the rest of the country um, adapting to Islam uh, two or 300 years before that. So they would have known that that would have been a central feature of, of this. But at the same time, um, other parts of Indonesia, even though they are predominantly Muslim, mm -hmm. um, the neighboring island of Java, they also have a gamelan tradition. They also have a, um, a, a tradition of epic poetry Mm. and shadow puppet theater that Bali also has. And they also use the Hindu, Hindu epic poems of the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, mm. even though they're a Muslim uh, uh, island, even though as, as a part of Indonesia, they're all Muslims, they still participate in all these sort of Hindu epic poems as part mm. of their arts culture, which is actually maybe even more fascinating. Um, so, um, so in that way, you can see the way that uh, the Ketchak is a, is a really unique part of Balinese arts and culture. Yeah, um, it sounds like you earlier, you mentioned the Indonesia model, which is unity in diversity, mm -hmm, yeah. diversity in unity. Unity so, in diversity, yeah, unity it's a national diversity. motto. Yeah. yeah. So it's, this is like one thing that, yeah, one thread that ties them. And it's really fascinating because in, in the arts of Bali, the more you, you listen and the more you read and the more you attend and, and visit and understand it, the more you see the historical layers mm. are, not, are not subtle. They're, they're really there. <laughs> they're, they're audible, they're visible. Um, and it's, it's a really interesting way of understanding the relationship between history and the performing arts. Mm -hmm. um, this idea in the US of uh, art always has to be new and mm -hmm. exciting that, that you know, you're, you're, you're trying to develop your individual voice as apart from others. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist there. The, 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 the idea with Balinese art is that you are always referencing and invoking the history in which you uh, emerge. Mm. And so you, you can actually listen to and hear different layers of history from different uh, periods in Balinese history, which are really extraordinary to actually be able to listen to that. Um, so when I teach Balinese music to my uh, students in, in Sarah Lawrence, that's one thing that we pay close attention to is how in, in just one piece of music, you can hear over a thousand years of history. So that really sort of concludes this this little brief lesson on the Balinese Ketchak and and I think at some point it might be great for have to have students get together and we can we can all do some chucking together and figure out a way to get our voices to interlock. Um, it is a magical experience to to be able to be a part of a whole in a way that is a very unique way to do it musically in which your part matters for almost nothing. But when you get everyone's part together, then it's really everything. Mm. Um, so thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, Nico, can you stop the pre presentation? Yes. Sure. So uh, thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. Thank you for having me. For this very thorough, in-depth introduction. To oh, Ken. thank you very much. And we look forward to uh, actually learning how to do this with you. So that sounds great. First and then our students. Fantastic. Thank you for having me.